Hi, my name is Brandon and I'm an alcoholic and addict in recovery. And in today's video, I want to talk about what's become one of the most important parts of my recovery, which is a daily program of spiritual practice. Uh, Tommy Rosen discusses this in Recovery 2.0, and I want to read some of what he says about it. Tommy writes, Sadhana means daily spiritual practice. Its purpose is to attune you in such a way that you connect with your highest self, the part of you that is divine in nature. You can then live your day from this place of reconnection. Once your thoughts descend, it becomes increasingly difficult to meet yourself, which is why people often practice their sadhana first thing in the morning. All right, I'm going to stop right there because for anybody who's in addiction, this idea of your thoughts descending should sound familiar. I know when I was in my addiction, uh, a lot of times I would find myself during the day getting into a funk, I used to call it. Uh, and I think all of us experience this, whether we're sober or, or otherwise. But in addiction, it was so hard to pull out of it. And in fact, I would often use drugs and alcohol as a way to try to distract myself from it. But they ended up just kind of creating this centrifugal force that helped me spiral even further into it. So in recovery, it's important not only to focus on how to pull ourselves out of those kind of situations when they happen, but also prevent those situations from happening in the first place. And having a daily spiritual practice that starts with something that you do each morning is a great way to do that. I'm going to keep reading what Tommy says here. He says, your sadhana will consist of elements that help you to maintain balance in your life, strengthen and detoxify your body, and calm your mind. Ultimately, when you do your sadhana, you will feel great, have less or no pain in your body, increase mental clarity and intuition, and feel aligned with your highest purpose. Sadhana is an addiction buster. It will help you to attune yourself to the frequency of recovery. So it, one important thing that I'll say there is that the the sadhana, your spiritual practice, this is a personal thing. People can give you lots of suggestions for how, for different things you can do. But uh, I have found that this is something that each person has to figure out on their own. What makes the most sense to them? And uh, Tommy writes about his, and then I'll talk a little bit about mine. He says, my sadhana consists of physical yoga practice to activate my body by bringing prana or life force into my spine, organs, and tissues, meditation and chanting to help me gain mastery over my mind before it has a shot at mastering me, and prayer to help me connect with and express myself to my higher power. So, uh, he goes on to say that there's various different elements you can bring in. He says sadhana elements can include yoga, meditation, pranayama, breath work, chanting, singing, dancing, journaling, reading, spiritual literature, and anything else that connects you with your highest self. Sadhana can be short. Even three minutes can make a huge difference. The main thing is to adopt a practice every day that you can manage. As with all new endeavors, a little bit of discipline goes a long way. So this was something that I learned early in recovery, that I needed to take time each morning to do something to elevate my spiritual self. And it started when I was or early in recovery, when I was in treatment, I was every morning before I woke up, before I even got out of bed, I was filled with fear and dread. And this was left over from my time in addiction when fear was a major element in my life. And I was just filled with dread, so much so that I couldn't imagine getting out of the bed in the morning and facing the world. And someone made a suggestion uh, that I should, before I even get out of bed, I should pray. And I didn't know what to pray to. I didn't know how to pray. And the and the person told me, you know what, just just talk, you know, just say what what you're feeling. And so that's what I started to do. And that's how I started discovering how to elevate my spiritual self first thing in the morning. Um, 
after I started to pray, I, I was still having a little bit of trouble. And another person gave me a suggestion of doing affirmations in the mirror. And I thought this was the dumbest thing I'd ever heard. Uh, standing in front of the mirror and smiling and telling myself these affirmations about uh, the things that I could accomplish and and trying to offer myself a different perspective on the way that I was going to be able to make it through the day rather than the perspective I had, which was I couldn't make it through the day. But it worked. And for a couple of months, that's what I did to get me started in the morning. And it was prayer and it was these affirmations that got me to a point where all of a sudden getting out of bed in the morning wasn't so bad. Um, I still had a healthy amount of fear in my life, but it wasn't so bad. And as that fear started to dissipate, I found myself not really needing the affirmations as much. And instead, I started getting drawn to, and I still kept up the prayer, and I started adding more to the prayer. In 12-step uh, literature, we have the third step prayer, and we have the seventh step prayer, and we have other prayers as well. But I started incorporating the third and seventh step prayer into my morning prayer. And instead of talking about fear, I really started talking about gratitude a lot in those prayers and then asking for the ability to help other people. And so my prayers changed a little bit and they've basically remained the same for the past two years. But I started incorporating meditation and breath work into my morning routine and that has helped me to be mindful of what's happening in my head. So my mindfulness meditation where I focus on my breath and then bring my concentration back, back to my breath when, I'm, when I see my mind wandering, that helps me keep in touch with what's happening in my mind. And then the other thing that I started to do was reading spiritual literature first thing in the morning. And after I did that for a couple of weeks, I realized, well, maybe I can write something about uh, what I've read and share that with other people. And then uh, later on, someone suggested that instead of just writing something, I do some videos about it. And so I picked that up and developed through that a spiritual um, rhythm uh, and a spiritual practice where this is what I do every day. I pray, I meditate, I read, and then I try to communicate what I've read uh, and put it out there for the world just in case it might help someone else. That has been a core foundation of my recovery. I can't imagine doing recovery without something that I'm doing every single morning in in the same way. Um, and while I've recently thought, nah, maybe I'm at a point where I need to shift some things around, change some things up, um, I still find that that early morning time to lift my spiritual self and to engage with my spiritual self keeps me locked on to that part of myself throughout the day and helps me really avoid the situations where I, I descend into my feelings and can't come out, can't come out of them. So it's important, I think, for everybody who's entering recovery to find similar things. And if you are not into prayer or if you've never tried meditation, you know, give meditation a try. That's a good one. And there's lots of guided meditations out there. Yoga is another thing. Uh, I know lots of people who love journaling and getting up and writing their feelings down. This is all very important. And I haven't even talked about what I do at the end of the day as well. But I won't get into all of that. I could go on and on about how this spiritual practice extends throughout the day to the end of the day. Um, the point is starting the day with it uh, from the very beginning of my recovery was a huge step in making it through the debilitating fear that kept me in my addiction and getting past that so that I could move forward in spiritual recovery. That's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with more. Have a good one.